What's up, folks? It's Jang here from UltimateRC.com, and this is the Acme Trooper. I got this from HobbyKing.com as an almost ready to run set for $179 US. That's shipped. This is a one tenth scale four wheel drive, brushless powered, and lipo powered, lipo included, short course truck. Now, the body may be a shameless direct copy of the Traxxas Slash, but underneath there's nothing like a Slash here. This is a low center of gravity design with an aluminum flat pan chassis. Like I said, it does come with a brushless system pre installed. It's a pretty uh, weak motor, actually. 2080 kV, just a 540 size or a 3650. The speed control, Hobby Wing, Easy Run, 35 amp. What? 35 amp in a four wheel drive? I kid you not. Now look over on the other side. Here is where the LiPo battery that's included with the truck is, is uh, seen. This is a 2200 milliamp battery, but it's a three cell. What they did was they went with a higher voltage setup, but lower amperage. Man, this battery weighs almost nothing. I'm really worried about the capacity of this thing, but I kind of like the idea of going with a higher efficiency setup. Looking at the suspension, it's double wishbone suspension all the way around. However, the shocks are really, really, really laid down and it just makes it very lazy. They're laid down far too much and you really need a lot more stiffness compared to what comes right out of the box. At the ends, you have pillow balls on all four corners. There's a lot of slop, a lot of slop in the joints. Uh, pretty much in every direction. A lot of this stuff cannot be removed uh, by just making adjustments or tightening, loosening things up. There's, there's really a lot of slop all the way around. If you look in the steering column, look how much that, that uh, left front tire is moving. Here back at the back where the toe links are actually, lo actually locked in, you still have, look at this, that's just flopping around. Oh, that's just because the wheel nut wasn't tightened all the way. Now take a look at these wheels and tires. The wheels are 2.2 inch in diameter, but they're really narrow, as are the tires that they include on here. These are a copy of the 1.9 inch crawler tire or scaler tire from Proline called the flat iron. It's a, just a weird size, shape, and hard rubber compound to put on a short course truck. Continuing back with the chassis, Emax and T-Max owners will recognize the bulkhead design. It used to be infamous in the Traxxas case, it actually broke a lot. Like I said, aluminum uh, flat pan chassis all the way along. The center diff is mounted kind of up towards the front. And then you have FRP or fiberglass plates that are providing stiffening as upper decks. And front and rear very large bumpers are included. Pretty much standard short course fare there to help uh, dealing with tapping from the front and from the back. Again with the sloppiness and flexibility in parts here you can see that the body posts are actually bent right from the factory. It's actually because the holes in the body weren't put in the right place. In the package you do get a balancing charger for your LiPo pack. This is an AC unit. Uh, however, millions of people around the world will recognize this plug, but folks in the United States will not. You will need to run an adapter. In my case, I just use my own charger. Now, once I did get it charged up, I wanted to go out and drive, but I couldn't. I just could not drive with this much tire rub against the body. It's really, really bad. It's rubbing hard, uh, even without any steering going on there. I had to trim out the body quite a bit for clearance and also raised the right height of the suspension all around. While I was fiddling with the suspension, I also stood up the shocks by moving them out one hole on the shock tower from this to this. And when I went to do that, I noticed another assembly issue with this. Right up in here in this upper mount, they're actually tightened up quite a bit too much. They're actually binding by actually just Turning that out a quarter of a turn or so, allowing there to be just a little bit of gap in there like they're, like they're supposed to be, it just completely frees up the suspension. Look at that, just a tremendous difference. Very important to go through all the hardware on this truck and make sure it's not too tight and not too loose. Now after doing the little tweaks and getting everything secured up properly, I hit the track. Now a bunch of caveats right here. First, this is my first time driving this truck, period. Second, this is my first time driving on this track layout. Third, I'm filming and driving. Fourth, I was half of the time talking with another guy on the driver's stand while filming and driving. But all that aside, the truck actually handled quite nicely on the track for something that's essentially an RTR. 
I would actually go so far as to say that it handled better than a ready-to-run Traxxas Slash 4x4 that costs twice as much. Now, those wheels and tires I mentioned, they're hard, they're narrow, they're a crawler design. They did not work very well. I was definitely drifting in pretty much every corner where I had the throttle on. So the very first thing that I wanted to do to change things up and just push the truck a little bit more was to change out the tires, and so I did. Presto Changeo, there you go. New tires, these are standard short course wheels and tires, just the normal size that fits the Slash, the Blitz, just the normal ones, 12 millimeter hex, they fit right on. Don't ask me what type of tires they are, that doesn't matter, they're just decent racing tires. They're actually used and were worn down quite a bit, but they still gave me quite a lot of traction, way better than the stalkers. And not only did I gain grip, but I also gained compliance over bumps. These uh, standard tires just are softer, they're more compliant, they allow the truck to stay on the ground, to keep contact much better, and it really helps to elevate the level of performance of the truck. Now I was worried about the level of power that would come off of that motor, but it's actually pretty decent. But it's still able to push the truck around pretty nicely for an essentially RTR low cost vehicle. Tops out at about 28 miles per hour on flat ground with a fully charged pack. And believe it or not, I was able to go almost 15 minutes on a single charge on that little 2200 pack. My Novak Sentry data logger confirmed that the motor was most of the time pulling between 35 and 40 amps on average. It had spikes up into the 50 range and the highest spike I ever got was about 75-76 amps. I put the stock tires back on to take it on some rougher dirt over here in a construction site where the other track was being completely rebuilt just to see if, you know, that crawler style tread would fare a little bit better on more broken up uh, terrain with a lot of bumps and, and just loose dirt in it. It did okay actually, you know, four wheel drive will get you over just about anything. But still, they were slipping and sliding a lot and they're just not good tires. They're definitely something that you would want to change on this vehicle. Now I spent about a pack and a half of time just driving the truck poorly, really poorly, intentionally, trying to get it to cartwheel, um, taking it through some areas where I was just staying completely on the throttle the whole time. You can see the individual videos, just the raw footage, all of it, uh, on my YouTube channel as separate videos, or you can look them up on the Ultimate RC forums. Just search for Hobby King Acme Trooper, and you'll find the thread. Uh, I, I really just wanted to see what would give on this truck. You know, it's not running a very high-powered brushless system right now. Any vehicle can be made to break if you put enough power through it, but with what it comes with, it just was not able to break any parts in my hands. Frequently, I would intentionally land with the throttle still on. It does not have a slipper clutch, but it does have a center diff. Wasn't able to take out any of the gears in it. I was rough on the bumpers, rough on the skids, rough on the suspension. Nothing broke out of the equipment that's included on the truck. Does that mean that you cannot break it in stock form? Absolutely not. But for me, with what I consider to be a reasonable amount of use and abuse, nothing broke. In fact, most of the time I had trouble getting this truck to not land on its wheels. With that low center of gravity and with the height and shape of the body, most of the time when it would roll over, it would roll over right back onto its wheels. Now speaking of that body, I do attribute some of the toughness of this truck to that body itself. Like I said, it's a direct copy of the shape of the Traxxas Slash body, but it's thick. They did not skimp on material there. The Lexan is very thick and very tough. It's going to stand up to quite a lot of abuse. And it also takes and absorbs a lot of the impact of rollovers and side swipes. I have to admit, when I first saw the Hobby King Acme Trooper online, I rolled my eyes and smirked. I really thought that it was not going to be a good quality vehicle at all. When I actually got it in my hands, I was certain it was not going to be a good quality vehicle low powered electronics in it, a lot of flexible parts, a lot of slop in the suspension, really poor choice of tires, a bad initial suspension setup, it needed trimming, it needed some things to be changed right out of the box, poor assembly for a lot of components. But to be fair, it only took me about a half an hour to get this thing ready to run. And considering that I paid 175 bucks for it, shipped. And all it needs is a radio, which nowadays you can get for 20 to 35 bucks. 
It comes with a lipo pack. It comes with a lipo charger. And it handles pretty darn nicely. I would definitely recommend changing the tires. But for just a beginner vehicle to kind of mess around and play with, I think it's a pretty good value. There are just a couple more things I want to caution you on. First of all, parts support. In the United States at least, pretty much the only places you're going to get parts will be from HobbyKing.com itself. Last time I looked, they were fully stocked on spare parts and the spare parts are very cheap. But anytime you have only a single source for parts, it's always something just to keep an eye out for. Make sure that they're staying on top of part support and that they're keeping things in stock. And the other thing is racing. If you're looking for a low cost entry into four wheel drive short course racing, first of all, this vehicle is too wide to fit into the Roar legal dimensions. Perhaps with a certain type of wheel with a very low offset to it, something like the wheels from the low C four wheel drive short course truck or possibly the upcoming associated SC10 4x4. Maybe those will work. I'm not sure if the Proline Pro Track wheels will work. I'm not sure if they'll actually clear the hubs. But that's something to watch out for. Also, this thing does not have the power of modern four wheel drive racing short course trucks, and I'm not sure if the drive line will handle it. I haven't tried it myself, but I wouldn't automatically assume that it would handle the big modern racing power plants. Well, that's the Hobby King Acme Trooper, four wheel drive short course truck. Hope this was a useful overview and review for you. I hope you'll subscribe to see more reviews. And as always, hope to see you on the friendly forums at ultimatercom Thanks for watching.